Welcome to another edition of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this certification training course edition, we're going to learn how to install a motherboard. This is from the 220-602 exams uh, objective, section 1.1, which talks about adding, removing, configuring components. And specifically with this module, we're going to talk all about doing that with motherboards. So what we're going to learn is planning process. Before you begin the process of installing, what should you think about? How should you select the motherboard that you're going to install? How should you select the case that you're going to install? There are certain things you could do prior to the motherboard installation that are very important. The installation itself is something we'll talk about. And then afterwards, there's certain series of processes we should go through. And although that looks like a lot just to install a motherboard, it's actually very simple. Once you go through this one time, you'll realize it's pretty easy to get a motherboard installed into a system. Let's start with the planning process. The first time that we're thinking about putting in a motherboard, we're going to want to choose which motherboard we would like to use. And that sounds easy enough, but there are so many different models from so many different manufacturers out there. And most of the time, we're looking for a motherboard that has a particular function. We're going to use this system for gaming. We're going to use it for web surfing. We're going to use it for video editing. And so we may think about the type of processors we'd want, the number of processors, how much memory, and uh, the size of the system itself might be a factor. If this is something going on your desktop, you may want it to be a very small motherboard. If this is a server, you don't really care how big it is, you've got a little bit more flexibility. It, whatever you do as far as the motherboard type, you have to get a case that's exactly the same size. The, the cases themselves are probably called an, an ATX case, a BTX case. If you aren't familiar with those motherboard types, we have another video you can watch that talks about these motherboard form factors, and that's what that's referring to. If you're replacing a motherboard, you're going to want to replace a motherboard with the same style or one that's compatible with that style for the case that you happen to have. Other considerations you might want to think about are things like power. How much power will this motherboard require? And is it going to make a lot of noise? The larger the motherboard and the more processors, the hotter they get, and therefore the more fans they might need. And the more fans mean there's a little bit more noise. There are certain websites out there that focus solely on making as quiet a system as possible, and that's all based around all of these different ideas about the type of motherboards and what you're going to put on it. So when we think about selecting a motherboard, we're going to think about how many processors we want and how much speed we're going to need. We'll talk about and think about uh, we need a motherboard that's going to allow us to have at least 2 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe we need one with up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe this is a server and we need 8 or more gigabytes of RAM on that system. And the motherboard is the determining factor for all of that. Motherboards themselves also have a number of built-in features like graphics and uh, expansion for the slots, how many slots you can expand with it. Are there uh, network connections built into it? Are there other audio options available on that motherboard? Some motherboards have much better audio than others. And if audio is really important, you're doing a lot of gaming or listening to a lot of music, you need surround sound for watching uh, some movies and DVDs on your system, that's a good thing to think about when you're buying a motherboard. These are four motherboards. They're all different. They're all part of the Intel Extreme Series motherboards. And you can see there's a little bit different between each one of those. Some have a larger number of expansion slots than the others. Some are larger motherboards than the others. Some have, uh, uh, on, the on the processor set up for your video, uh, separate fans on this system. This one happens to have a lot more expansion for the number of ports. There's a lot more expansion slots. There's a lot, uh, a lot more ports on the back. So the motherboards, this one I think has six or eight different USB ports on it. It has eight different or six different SATA drive connections on it, whereas some of these others up here don't have near as many SATA connections on the motherboard themselves. So you have to start thinking about a lot of different pieces to determine the exact model of motherboard that you might want. Once you have the motherboard picked out, you're going to want to put a case in. You'll need to match that with the motherboard type. You want a case that will fit an ATX motherboard, that will fit a micro ATX motherboard. And this case might also be based on the function that you'd like it to have. 
if you're going to be expanding or think that you might be expanding the number of drives, the type of drives, you want multiple DVDs in this particular system, then you want to maybe think about getting a case that will allow that into the future. And sometimes you just want to soup it up. Have a case that has a lot of different lights in it. You can really start customizing the different cases. Here's an example of some. The one on the top left is just a standard white case you might use. It's got some ports on the front for your audio and for your USB connections. Here's one that a gamer might have. You can see it's got a clear uh, panel on the side so you can look into the case itself. And there's a lot of colored lights. There's a big fan on the front. And it's designed to be a little bit flashy. Sometimes you want a little bit smaller. And this is a cube type case that is designed to be very small and sit on your desk or maybe sit just under it and take a very small footprint. So it depends on what you'd like to do. But you can start matching now the type of motherboard you want with the type of case that you'd like to display as well. And here's the case that I'm going to use in my environment. Not near as flashy as that nice gaming case with all the lights, is it? This is designed to be a server. and It's very flat. It's got a very low profile. And it's very spread out. So this one's going to be a very easy one for me to install a motherboard in because I don't have to reach around a power supply or in different parts of the case. It's very, very open and very spread out. And it makes a good one to show you as we're installing this. So before we start the installation process, we should think about preparing the motherboard itself. Motherboards don't come with the processors installed in them. They don't come with memory installed in them. You need to purchase those pieces or move them from a different motherboard if you're, if you're changing the motherboard itself and put it onto this motherboard. Now, those are pretty easy these days to install. A CPU and memory, it snaps right in. But generally, also on these CPUs, there are heat sinks that might go on top of it or even fans that go on top of the heat sink. And these are really difficult to get installed once you have the motherboard in the system. So it makes sense to do all of that beforehand. Also, there are a number of jumpers and switches on a motherboard. You may want to check with your manual and make sure they're set exactly the way you'd like them before you put them into very tight quarters inside of a case. The case itself should have something called standouts on them. Those standouts will separate the motherboard and have it sit just above the case itself. You don't want your motherboard touching the metal part of the case except where those standouts are. Otherwise, it will short out the components. Your motherboard will cease to function that way. And usually the location of those standouts can be associated back with the motherboard documentation. It'll tell you exactly where to put those standouts for the motherboard that you happen to be installing. Here's the motherboard we're going to install in our case. You can see it's got nothing in it. There's no processors. There's no memory. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is add my processors into this. I just popped them into those zero insertion force slots, those ZIF connectors here. And I added some memory into this mix as well. Now, remember I said we want to put anything else like our uh, our heat sinks and our fans on here as well. So I went ahead and added my heat sinks and my fans. This is probably the last time you'll see them in the pictures that I made. I left them off so that we could see it a little better once we went through our process of installation. But I think now that we've got all of this on here, I've checked the there are a number of switches. There's some dip switches down here. There's a number of jumpers right next to there. So check your documentation. Make sure all of this is exactly the way you'd like it to be prior to installation. So we're ready to install our motherboard. The process is, in my case, it's going to be easy. But sometimes you get a very small case or a case that has a lot of other pieces in it. It's, it's a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. There's very tight quarters there. So you want to be sure you're ready to go right off the right, right when you want to install it. It's ready and everything's set, set to go. It, there are standouts that are coming off of that case. Make sure you use every standout that you can for the motherboard. It adds additional support. And sometimes when you're pushing in a power connections and other pieces into the motherboard, you want to be sure it's got some extra support on the bottom so that you don't bend the motherboard itself. That would be bad if you started to bend and put pressure on the motherboard so that you were cracking the different components. These are very delicate bus connections, very delicate components on the motherboard itself. You don't want to bend it if at all possible. This is a picture of one of the standouts. So I, I got a real close one. So you could see it's rising just above the motherboard. And these can unscrew. There's other holes in the motherboard that I can screw it into. But in this case, I just laid my motherboard right on top. I made sure all of my standouts were in the right place on this motherboard. And it came with some screws that I screw right on top of my motherboard. You can see there's another couple screws I put in. There are some screws on the motherboard that I didn't have a spot on my case. And that's, that's relatively normal. Some motherboards are a little bit longer, a little bit 
shorter, or they've designed to go into the motherboard in multiple ways, both long ways and short ways. And that was the case with this one. So I was able to fill, I went ahead and made sure I, every possible stand that I could put in, I did. And then make sure you screw in every single screw for every single standout. You want this in there very tightly. When you start up a system, there's a, a power supply with fans, there's other fans, there's a hard drive that's moving, there's a CD-ROM, there's a lot of vibration. And you want to be sure that the motherboard stays as still as possible. Once I have it screwed into my system, I can then start connecting wires. And you're going to find when you start working with motherboards, there's a lot of wires. There's wires for the reset button. There's wires for your lights. There's wires for sound. There's wires to extend serial ports and firewire ports. You're going to want to plug in every single one of those to the motherboard. And then you want to test it. And you plug, usually the way I test it is I plug in a keyboard, I plug in a monitor, I turn it on, see if anything happens. If something is not working, if nothing shows up on my monitor, usually you listen for a beeping noise. Uh, there's also a card you can get called a post card, a power on self test, test uh, diagnostics card. We're going to talk more about diagnostics and troubleshooting motherboards in a different video. But that's something you could also use. I talked about all those wires. This is what they look like. And in my case, I was fortunate that my case and everything associated with my case even had written on the end of the wires what they were for. One's the reset switch. This is a hard drive light. There's one, a, a light for power that tells you the power light is on. And all that comes from the motherboard. That's how those lights are lighting up. On the motherboard itself, there's a number of, of, of connections on it. They look like jumper connections, but you can see they have written next to them power, power LED, hard disk drive, NIC1, NIC2, and buttons for reset, buttons for power. Now you know exactly where you can plug those things in. And if you plug them in the wrong way, they, they go in a certain way and you can see these aren't keyed. So you could plug them in the wrong direction. And if you do, nothing nothing will be hurt. You, you'll just notice the light doesn't turn on. You can take it, turn off your system, take these off the motherboard, plug them back in. And when you turn it back on, your lights will be working again. Another example is, is plugging in a speaker. You can see it plugs right into the motherboard connection right there with the audio. So once it's finally installed, that's how it looks. I've got uh, all of those wires plugging into the sides. I've got my power connection. In this case, my power actually stretches all the way over to the other side of the motherboard. And it, I have to do that because the connection for my hard drives and my floppy drives are right here. And I want them to be as close as possible to there. Those connections don't move very far off those bases. So you can see how easy that is. Not too hard. We'll plan out what we're going to do, pick out the motherboard we want, pick out the case we want. And from that point on, we can plan our installation installation, screw the motherboard into the case itself, and then plug in all of those different wires and test it. It's just that simple. For more A-plus certification videos, for our training notes, for other message boards to communicate with other A-plus professionals, visit our website at freeaplus.com.